In the beginning, man's worldview extended a little further than his next meal and next mating. Some millions of years later, having domesticated food and fire, built shelters and worked with others, he flourished and had time to ponder. The puzzle of life was born. He noticed amazing things he didn't understand, seasons, movement of the stars, and diversity among creatures. Being unable to explain them, he concluded that an all-powerful being or beings must be responsible. Religion was born. Eventually, one of his religions that became very powerful was Christianity, the Roman Catholic Church. The puzzle of life, as seen by the church, comprised a single piece, God. By the year 1500, it was taken as fact that we were God's special children, on his special place, and that everything else revolved around us. The heavenly bodies, all perfect spheres, circled the earth in perfect circles. Institutions of higher learning didn't question any of this, for they feared being labeled a heretic. The church dealt very harshly with heretics. Then along came Copernicus. He thought that it would make a lot more sense and the math would be a lot simpler if the earth orbited the sun. But the church would have none of it. After all, the Bible described God stopping the sun for a day. Copernicus, not wanting to be dealt with harshly, backed down. One rogue intellectual, the friar Giordano Bruno, concluded that Copernicus must be right and did not back down. He was unfortunately labeled a heretic and dealt with harshly. In the early 1600s, Galileo came along with his newfound telescope and keen powers of observation. He also noticed that things didn't mesh with the church's view and now could see the discrepancies clearly. He showed that indeed the earth was spinning, that it revolved around the sun, that the moon's surface was not smooth, and numerous other contradictions to church thought. Naturally, this enraged Rome. In 1633, an inquisition finally got Galileo to recant his heretical theories to avoid being dealt with harshly. But Galileo showed that in fact the puzzle had many pieces. They fit together amazingly well and that God would eventually be relegated to the puzzle's background as science continued to fill in blank spots. It became apparent that whenever science contradicted religion, science eventually was proven correct. Johannes Kepler filled in details on planetary motion. Isaac Newton added many pieces to the puzzle regarding motion, discerning laws that accurately described everything from gravity to orbits. Thankfully for Isaac, born as Galileo died, the church was proven wrong enough times that science was allowed to advance. In 1859, Charles Darwin revealed his long-researched theory of life's rise in the landmark book Origin of Species. It put many pieces of the puzzle together in a way that made sense to scientists worldwide. The puzzle was looking a lot more like science than superstition. Nuclear theory, Einstein's relativity, and increasingly powerful telescopes filled in even more pieces which fit together remarkably well, reinforcing each other. Evidence for an ancient universe mounted. Nuclear dating techniques were developed that dated both rocks and past life, which meshed with ages coming from astronomers and predicted by evolution. By 1950, science found evolutionary theory indispensable. Then, when genetics burst on the scene, it gave powerful reinforcement with techniques that became acceptable enough for use as evidence in courts. Evidence from many disciplines poured onto the puzzle with amazing fit, all converging to show an Earth of over 4 billion years old. And yet, in the face of all of this evidence, religious fundamentalists cling to archaic beliefs passing off religion as science. They hold that the universe is only a few thousand years old in spite of overwhelming evidence to the contrary. They pick out the dwindling holes of scientific understanding as a reason to toss entire bodies of evidence relying on religious texts for guidance rather than the scientific method. We can only hope that reason will eventually win out and that humanity will rise above the superstition that blinds so many to the obvious. Only then can we get on with the task of really piecing together the amazing puzzle of life.